Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Amy. I'm so glad to have you here on this channel. We do a lot of luxury, especially for fashion and for handbags. It would be great if you decide to subscribe. I would love to have you back. On Instagram, I asked you to just tell me what your questions are. And so we're gonna go over all of your questions. There are some pretty good ones. But before we go over them, I also wanna thank today's video partner, Lily Silk. Thank you so much for sponsoring this part of the video. I am, in fact, wearing one of their beautiful silk shirts. I actually own so many of them. Silk is one of my favorite material to wear all year round. And especially if you have seen my Hermes scarf video, you would know how much I love silk. But the one that I'm wearing, I love the beautiful button details. If you haven't noticed, they are pearls. It's really, really gorgeous. It comes in so many different colors. I just chose it in the white because I like white. And I love the fact that this one is a little bit oversized. So just for size reference, I always take an extra small at Lily Silk, but some of their kiting is a little shorter. So some of the other shirts that I own, they are just slightly more petite, whereas this one is slightly longer, which is great for transitional weather. And in fact, this one, because it's a little longer, I can just unbutton the whole thing and just wear it as a jacket over uh, a cooler summer day. They also sent me this beautiful jacket, which of course I picked. And I deliberately left the tags on. So the packaging always comes with extra buttons or extra fabric. So a sample of the fabric. And then of course their tags. I've seen quite a few people try on their jackets and I thought it was lovely. So I had to try one for myself, especially for transitional weather, it's perfect. So the silk portion on this jacket is the inside, which is super soft. It comes with these beautiful gold buttons all throughout. A lot of people also compare this jacket to the Balmain jacket. I would say that it's a good dupe for sure and at a fraction of a cost, which is great. And if you don't like the fit of the Balmain because Balmain is made so, so narrow at the waist, which frankly speaking, even for me, it's a little tight on some days. So if you prefer a more looser fit, a more everyday fit and at a fraction of a cost, this is definitely a great contender. I will say, however, that the arms are a little bit wider than I would like. Of course, I have tiny arms, so I usually prefer my jackets to have much tighter arms so it looks more fitted. But for the general population, if you're just average size, I would say that this is probably a better fit. And because the size is more forgiving, again, I got it in the extra small, you can layer inside, which um, is a lot more difficult with the balming. So here's another look at the inside. The outside material, let me just tell you what it is, because I already forgot. The outside material is a blend of polyester and viscose and spandex. Therefore, it is a little stretchy too on top of that. So it's very forgiving. And I will try it on for you guys. Obviously, it is still quite hot. We're actually having a heat wave. So even though this video is going up in August, it's really, really hot today. So I will just try it on for you guys. And I just paired it with a more dressy short and some heels and it's perfect. But obviously, this is gonna be good for fall, winter, with pants, with jeans. It's good for work. So it's definitely a great jacket. And last but not least, their pillowcases. I love their pillowcases so much. I chose it in a grayish color this time because I already have their pink, their white, and myself, uh, even before I discovered Lily Silk, I already use silk bedding, silk drapes, and silk sheets. So this is their queen size pillowcase in the, pretty sure it's the 19 mom silk. Anyway, they have different silkness. And this is like one of their standard ones, which is very, very soft and very easy to take care of. For those of you who do not know, silk is one of the easiest material to take care of. I just wash it in the washing machine on delicate cycle. Uh, I don't need to do anything special about it. I just throw it in. But obviously I do have a front loading machine, which is very, very nice and delicate. And I just hang dry. It's so easy. It's great for your skin, great for your hair. It's great for your beauty sleep. It regulates your temperature and we do use all orthopedic pillows in this household. The zipper pull is seamless and of course you can use my coupon code at checkout to save 15% off your purchase. The first question by Cosmic Berries. If you could choose again, which flat card holder would you pick? That's a good question because for the longest time I've been using this one, so the LV1. And this is just their most basic flat card holder. I love it because I mean, I've had it for a long, long time and it's 
you know, I don't baby it, I just throw it in the bag. And I've recently started using my Chanel ones. I have two Chanel ones, one in gold and one in the So Black Gabrielle line. But I've only been using this one so far because I've been wanting a little bit of just color. This is from the Mitsie Dao 2019 collection. So the difference between the two is that the Chanel one is taller. It's about the same width, but it's also a bit fatter. Obviously the LV one is empty right now, and I use the same amount of cards on either one. Honestly, it's not so hard to choose either card holder because they're both great. And because they are, you know, in the realm of luxury, the price range for these things are still affordable. If I had to pick again, yeah, it's hard because if I want to be super carefree and I just don't even have to wonder if I'm gonna scratch the canvas and whatnot, especially because this one is so hard wearing. If I'm traveling, then I would go with this one because it's just so easy, it's super carefree and the glazing has been fine and because of the price point i just don't worry about it so much and it's been so great and so hard wearing and of course i still have it which is why i can still always go back to it um mainly when i travel i feel like it's just such an easy grab and go but with this one the chanel ones obviously they are just a little bit more luxe and they are more pretty to look at on a day-to-day -day basis in my own hometown and I can be a bit more mindful usually how I place it back in my, my handbags. Then I would go with the Chanel because there's just something about it that just makes your heart sing so much more, right? This one is just the regular everyday basic ones, uh, but this one is just the pretty one. It's a little bit thicker, so it also takes up more space in your bag. Not that much more, but it does, right? It's also taller. So yeah, great question, but I, I have to say both are great and card holders are my favorite SLGs, my only SLGs actually, aside from my key holder. Question number two by Wally R17. How many bags do you buy in a month? Wow. <laughs> oh, um, I don't count. And I guess, is that a good or a bad thing? I think for me, it's more like I have an idea of what I want to achieve that year, for example. Like usually you think about your wish list, right? And so for me, it's not a matter of how many I buy every month because it's so hard to calculate that way. Some bags can be so much more expensive, such as the classic flaps. Some bags can be super affordable. You know, anything fun or trendy that is um, hot in the moment, those can be a bit more affordable. So like, it's hard to put a number. Like, I don't know if i've always bought something every single month i don't know <laughs> i guess that's a bad thing to not know but at the same time it's more about going with the flow and it's more about keeping track of your own um you know spending versus your wish list right uh sometimes it's things outside of the wish list ca that can make things out of balance but you just kind of readjust especially if you have a more extensive collection there's always room to maybe rehome some of the things that you're not using or that's not really bringing you any more joy by all means i'm not saying that you should always just buy and sell your old stuff and so that you can buy new things no not at all but i'm just saying sometimes you have to be more creative and sometimes this happens so um it's not a matter of how many bags I, I buy per month it's really a matter of how my collection is at that time uh, some months i just don't buy anything so yeah i can't really give you a number per se next question by lux in texas i'm about a year and one to one no bag yet and my essay said soon is there a limit as to how much you would spend or wait for a bag from Hermes. Oh, the ultimate game. Um, is there a limit? No. I'm sure if you watch this channel or my luxury live show that I co-host with Kat, or if you just are in general um, on your own journey and watch many other people's Hermes videos to learn and to educate yourself, that everyone's experience is very very different there are people and there are locations around the world where you're able to just basically buy a few things and be offered something almost on the spot or within a few you know visits basically um that's possible apparently but 
not where I am from. Of course, I don't know where you're from either, but it just sounds like where you're from is very similar to where I'm from. And also it's the more standard way because from what I know, you have to wait. It's a question of, uh, there are many, many factors and it's so hard to cover everything in just one video, even if this is a long form video. So the many factors is that depending on the stock of your city, of your store, it depends on the clientele and the demand of your city as well. So supply and demand is very, very, very relevant. So for example, in Vancouver, we only have one store. Can't, not, can't really go to any other store to try. Uh, and our demand is super high. We have a lot of very, very luxury forward people here. So demand is very high and supplies very low. So no matter what, you have to wait. Of course, there's a lot of uh, people sharing that they were able to score from uh, destinations such as Paris, Hawaii, and certain other European countries. But it's not all the time either. I think those are also uh, very, very lucky individuals. I don't think it's everybody that gets them just by traveling. Obviously, the chances are higher, so you have a better chance of scoring faster with a smaller purchase history, but it doesn't guarantee 100% either. So just be patient. This is a process. Uh, and honestly speaking, I don't know what bag you're after, but depending on the bags, one-to-one -one is the minimum, right? If you want a larger bag, one-to-one -one is the minimum. If you want the smaller bags, then you probably have to go higher. Uh, so just be patient. Don't stress out too much. It's hard not to, but just don't stress out too much. Trust the process and just be polite, do everything right, but also don't just buy for the sake of buying because that's also a rookie mistake. Don't buy things just for the sake of spending. Don't do that. I feel very strongly about this, which is why uh, to the outside world, if people are comparing, for example, I am really not that you know extravagant of a spender. And I admit that, it's fine. But I only buy things that I truly love and use. And I think when you stay true to yourself, your essay also gets to know that about you. They won't start pushing things that they know you won't like either. So it helps you and it helps your essay at the same time. So just be true to yourself, trust the process and you're going to get there. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I hope so because <laughs> I'm trying to remind myself of my own advice basically. <laughs> Overjoyed. What has been your best ready to wear piece so far? Wow. Uh... You know, I have had this person, can't remember who now, but uh, basically a subby telling me that certain brands, she doesn't consider them to be ready to wear. I mean, I agree, technically, yes. So for example, I love self-portrait. I buy a lot of dresses, tops from self-portrait, and I consider them to be ready to wear only because they do runway shows and they do them all the time. Of course, if you want to be super technical, they are considered advanced contemporary, a term that I learned recently, which is, uh, you know, it's not like the premium, premium, premium couture type of ready to wear. So if I have to be super technical, then I cannot count my self-portrait, which is sad because I consider my self-portrait dresses to be beautiful, ready to wear. But I will say that uh, between these two, they are probably one of my best purchases. So this is an Hermes top t-shirt, very wearable, easy to dress up with and dress down. So I would say this is probably one of my best ready to wear piece. It's simple, but it's just, it is, it is what it is. It's just so classic. But because I love fashion so much, I don't just dress one way, right? I don't just dress classic all the time. I also dress very trendy sometimes. So Balmain is kind of one of those brands where they just have their signature. They are very, very fashion forward, very just like, high fashion, uh, but also very trendy and also very street at the same time. Buttons are a big feature. Their big shoulders are a big feature. Their very, very narrow waist is a big feature as well. So I would say this denim skirt is probably one of my best because it's just so easy to throw this on with any t-shirt, like any tops, crop top, uh, tank top, whether it's even my um, Hermes silk scarf worn as a top, there's just, no wrong way to dress this and that is what i love about certain pieces 
such as these two where they are just so versatile. Okay, so if I can include self-portrait, let's not be super technical for once. Then I would have to say these two dresses. So this is the beautiful Azalee dress. This is the full length uh, or the meaty length. And it's just the most stunning classic design that self-portrait is known for. And I have to say this is like the best, best, best dress in my collection. It's just so super flattering and I love the color. You wouldn't think that it's really comfortable, but this is my most comfortable self-portrait dress. I can eat a buffet in this and it won't show any like lumps and bumps. Uh, it's so flattering, it's so feminine, it's so pretty and it's just so great to travel with this dress because it's super lightweight and it's so beautiful. I just love fashion so much. I love clothes so much. I love clothes more than bags. Obviously bags are super important, but clothes make your outfit. You don't have to have a bag, but if you have the clothes, and of course makeup and hair, <laughs> that also makes the outfit. Uh, clothes really is the biggest signature of being a, a fashion person. Yes, you need all the accessories. You need the bags, you need the jewelry, whatnot. But I still feel like clothes is the main, main thing. And it doesn't have to be always expensive. It doesn't have to be ready to wear all the time. I used to dress in the cheapest, ev like I used to dress in the cheapest things Ever. What I know now is that having a few high quality pieces of ready to wear that you can incorporate with the rest of your wardrobe really does spice up things too. The cheaper pieces, they will break down. They're just not cut the same way. They're just not as flattering. They just don't have the same effect. So that's my answer for you. I hope you enjoyed it. Will you pay the latest price increase of the Chanel medium flap? Such a great question. Uh, by the way, this is my small classic flap, my very first from 21A and I have to say I absolutely, absolutely am head over heels loving and carrying this bag a lot. I saw your question yesterday and I was actually thinking about it while I was wearing this bag yesterday and I can tell you honestly that is a yes. I would have said no before I owned this because I just didn't have the experience of a classic flap and I didn't have one, right? I have the jumbo, but it's different. Jumbo is just not the size for me. And also, you know, it was pre-love. Pre-love is great, but there's just something about getting the exact color and the most perfect color for you, right? So I had this thought yesterday where yes, it is really expensive now, like well over the $10,000 mark for a medium. Uh, plus tax, which is insane. <sighs> but I will say yes, because at the end of the day, what I've noticed in my whole sort of luxury career, I suppose, like luxury buying career, <laughs> it sounds very serious, but it's not. But it's true. It's the whole experience that I've accumulated all these years. What I have found is that if you buy three or four of the smaller purchases, they're great, but you know, they're not exactly the one it adds up to the same price as the one, right? So it's a little hard to swallow, really, to just the thought of even like, oh, paying for that much for a bag. But if it's the right one, if it's the perfect one, if it's exactly the combo that you want, the exact color, exact material, exact size, then it is worth it 100%. And I will honestly say that, yes, I will pay for it because that's my experience with this one. Yes, I just avoided the one price increase, the most recent one with this one because it was just a timing thing. But if it did went out, I would still have bought it because it just, I just couldn't, I just couldn't stop thinking about it. So whether I had paid the most recent price or not is irrelevant. But obviously I'm glad that I didn't. But in the future, if I wanted another classic flap, which is very, very possible at this point, I, I will just have to pay the retail. And in fact, it's not the worst thing in the world if you think really hard about it. Um, those of you who have been collecting classic flaps for the longest time, I'm talking about five, ten years ago, would know that these have gone up in prices significantly. Like, I'm sure ten years ago, this would have been half the price, probably. I'm pretty sure, like, I don't even have to check. I, I'm pretty sure it is. So if you just think of it that way, right? If you say you buy it today and it's super expensive, $10,000, for example, in another 10 years or even five years, it'll be double or 1.5 that money, which, you know, you would have been glad that you bought it then. So 
it's all relative and of course like i said it's hard to swallow and i'm not saying go crazy don't get in debt none of that be financially responsible be smart about your finances next question by linth pll do you own any hermes scarves yes of course you must be new to my channel i own four scarves now so i have two right here i have these are my newest ones these are the 90 centimeter scarves by the time you see this video i i would probably have posted the video where i wear my scarves in all my favorite ways 15 different ways actually and one of my favorite actually is to wear these as a top there's another one that i uh, just wore yesterday as a top and it was heaven oh my gosh that one's beautiful and i also have the 140 centimeter three graces pattern i will link them below so that you can watch it i love elmay scarves they are definitely my favorite um i will link those videos down below virginia do will you get a coco handle extra mini i don't want to say never because i hate to say something and then i go back in my words um i will never say never but for the moment for the time being i'm gonna say no because i already have two mini size cocoa handle they call them the small size now but it used to be the mini size back then so i already have two of those and i love the cocoa handle uh they are great chanel bags don't get me wrong though the extra mini is super cute and I love the fact that you can crossbody it. It's just the most cute extra mini bag that you can get. To me, it's considered a nano bag because even though the size doesn't look like it, what you can fit inside is very nano. Like you can't even fit a phone in it, right? So that really deters me. So I don't feel the need to add the extra mini Coco handle. It's not a style that I necessarily need. And I have a lot of mini bags and the fact that the extra mini just doesn't fit a phone just kills me it's just it's so cute but just mm, no next question by angel chang are there any balmain ready to wear that you are looking into getting and how about chanel ready to wear Ooh, great question so yes there is actually i am um well as of today i'm filming today but as of today i was gonna announce in my luxury live show that i'm hosting today or later tonight that i will be doing a members only luxury unboxing and it involves some bowman ready to wear so yes the answer is yes the way i approach ready to wear it's not so predictable it's more like of course we know that ready to wear is very expensive and i'm not someone who likes to buy things when i know they can go on sale and i'm sure a lot of you are too i mean unless it's something that you know uh, that it will just never be available if you don't buy it right away but ready to wear in general even for chanel um is often not always often available again in the sale so not talking about vancouver though because we only have the one store and honestly slim pickings here okay anything in sale is like never in my size they never have anything good anyway and anything good would have been snatched up by the vips already and i'm not a vip so i'm not saying that here it's possible to buy chanel ready to wear on sale it's possible but it's not always possible at least for me not in my sizes but i do generally feel that with ready to wear if i can save a bit of money then why not so with the balmain pieces that i just bought recently are from farfetch i'm gonna link it down below and it was in the sale i think it was already i think it's already sold up by now but anyway in case it's still available just check out the links you never know it might come back in stock that's how i was able to get it because i've been stocking it i've been waiting for it to go on sale finally it did but then my size was gone and i had to wait even longer for it to reappear so there was one that came back so i just bought it right away i am always on the lookout but it's not a predictable pattern i don't technically you know buy from every season i just wherever i spot it and i like the price and i like the style then i'll get it oh and to answer your chanel question is uh not yet chanel ready to wear is very pricey and i'm not there yet i have other things i'd rather buy first and as you all know and that's the next question how is your hermes journey going um that is the whole reason why i'm not buying into hermes sorry chanel ready to wear at the moment because i am still waiting 
I saved up. I'm still waiting for my wishlist bag to appear. I don't know when, nobody knows when. I'm hoping sooner rather than later, but like I said earlier, you cannot control these things. So you just gotta go with the flow, with the process, trust the process. So it's going well, I think, but I, honestly, how, how am I supposed to measure how well it is going? Like, I honestly don't know how well, like, do you guys actually know if it's going well until you get the item? I don't think so, right? I, I really don't think so. Like you, when you get it, you just get this whole whole feeling, right? I'm sure you just get this feeling of overwhelm, excitement and all. Uh, and I can only imagine because that's how I felt with the classic flap like this one. You know, although it's not as hard to get as the Hermes bag, I still wasn't sure I was going to be able to get it because stock is very limited. I already asked my essay whether I could get one. She told me once, no. So I gave up and later on I decided, you know what? I should try harder because I really, really like this color. This is the color that I want. So eventually I got it. So the excitement, I'm sure is similar, but probably times 10. So anyway, if you're on your Hermes journey or if you have been on an Hermes journey for years and you're already an experienced Hermes journeyer, <laughs> Let me know how it feels like and let me know how do you how do you even measure if it's successful? I honestly don't know. Of course, I'm hoping and I'm trying to attract this in my life that it's sooner rather than later because, um, you know, I, I think I did everything right. I've been a loyal customer. I truly, truly love the brand. I truly love to buy everything from the brand except perfume like fragrance is something that I don't don't consume um, in general like this household is smoke free perfume free fragrance free pet free uh, so all of those things um, we just don't have at home uh, and therefore it's just a matter of principle that I don't buy anything that is fragranced um, but otherwise, everything else, I buy. Let me know down in the comments how it has been for you, actually, because I really want to know. The more we share, the more information we gather, the more we can learn from each other. And I feel like that's how I've been able to stay calm. And, you know, I'm excited, but I'm not feeling entitled and I'm not feeling too impatient. Because, I mean, impatience is inevitable because you just don't know. But at least you can still be in control of your feelings to a certain extent so that it doesn't drive you crazy because these things can drive you crazy. Of course, if you're going to share, do say where you're from because uh, it always helps to know, um, you know, the different cities, how it works and everything because it's so different everywhere. It's so, 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 so different. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Like I said, if you're brand new to my channel and you enjoyed this content, please give it a like. And I would love to have you back, so please subscribe, turn on notifications, and I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Bye.